that, if my voice sounds good, if everything's okay, so we can start. You sound fantastic as always, Santi. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we, we have a, a cool segment today before the official start of the town hall, something that we prepared together with Ash. In fact, Ash prepared it. So thank you very much, Ash. Ash is our media host at Star Atlas. So welcome, Ash. She's the metaverse queen. <laughs> thank you, Santi. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Yes. So are we ready to kick it off? We are ready, we're ready. Thank you for being here with me, Ash. So we prepared the ecosystem, Metaverse ecosystem news as a whole, uh, where Ash is going to tell us some news about the, the whole Metaverse ecosystem and, and crypto in general, right? Yes, I am. Okay, let's kick it off. All right, so let's kick it off with some recent ecosystem updates. So FTX recently raised $400 million in a recent funding round from Paradigm, Multicoin, and others with a valuation of $8 billion. FTX US's valuation can be benchmarked now against Coinbase. In a recent Microsoft earnings call, Microsoft stated that the metaverse is the next wave of the internet and recently announced plans to acquire game studio Activision Blizzard for the largest all cash acquisition ever at $69 billion. They're hoping that it's huge, right? Yeah. They're hoping is. that bestseller games will help attract more users to the metaverse. In a recent statement, Microsoft chairman and CEO Satya Nadella said gaming is the most dynamic and exciting category in entertainment across all platforms today and will play a key role in the development of metaverse platforms. So I think that that's a, some pretty big news entering it our is. ecosystem. It is, yeah. Yeah, and so YouTube has been hinting at integrating NFTs and crypto as a way to better connect their content creators with their fan base. And on that topic, Ryan Wyatt has left YouTube gaming has left YouTube as head of gaming to accept a position with Polygon as CEO of Polygon Studios. He will be leading the organization across gaming, entertainment, fashion, sports, news, and more. Big moves for the metaverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, YouTube taking on NFTs and crypto would be huge. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah. So Ubisoft recently announced a strategic partner in Frontier Game, which is an ETH-based PvP, which is an ETH-based PvP battle game. So it sounds like they're making some more moves into the play to earn space. Sandbox launched a $50 million metaverse incubator this week in a partnership with venture accelerator Brink to help onboard new startups into the metaverse space. Facebook. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Facebook, better known today as Meta, recently sold the IP behind stablecoin DM to Silvergate, which is a bank that focuses on both traditional finance and cryptocurrencies. And following in the footsteps of Twitter, Reddit is currently testing verifiable NFTs as profile pictures. So we may be seeing some NFT integration in Reddit very soon. And a few more interesting side notes. Nike is looking to further their venture into the metaverse by hiring a metaverse director. Anheuser-Busch recently launched an NFT project for Bud Light. So for those that are able to score a token, they will be able to vote on Bud Light Next merchandise and gain access to Bud Light Next brand and partner events, among other surprises. And there's a rumor going around the tech space that this year Apple will be releasing their version of a wearable AR VR technology, which is pretty intriguing if you ask me. And on a more political front, Turkish president orders ruling party to study and explore the metaverse. The Turkish government recently met in the metaverse to discuss cryptocurrency legislation, where Grand National Assembly of Turkey Chairman Mustafa Alita stated, I believe metaverse-based meetings will become an essential part of our lives. And Rio de Janeiro also made headlines with its plans to allocate 1% of all reserves to cryptocurrencies. And Russian President Vladimir Putin states that Russia has a competitive advantage when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto mining infrastructures. So overall, I think it's really important to keep in mind that 
Even though the markets have been down recently, the underlying infrastructure continues to be built out and funded, and all while tech giants and legacy brands continue to explore ways to leverage crypto primarily through NFTs. So it's some exciting times that we're in, and you know, we're all still really, really early in this space. <laughs> We are. Thank you so much, Ash, for this. Uh, it's super informative for everyone, and I, I love it. So thank you for putting all this info together. And and yeah, it, it was great. I know that Michael is unmuted now, so he may have some comments. No, I just I just wanted to commend you, Ash. That was uh, really well done. It's some great information, very informative. I mean, for anyone out there that's listening in right now that has any outstanding questions about crypto, NFTs, or whether or not the metaverse has arrived, uh, I would definitively say that we we are here um, and you all sitting in the town hall today are the earliest adopters of it. So congrats to all of you. Uh, Ash, uh, when we launched the Star Atlas News Network, you know, you're definitely going to be the media host. I, I felt like I was listening to Bloomberg there. That was very well done. Oh, well, thank you. You know, Julia Chatterley is one of my idols. So thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> are we hosting a cooking show as well? Did you say Julia Childs? Julia Chatterley, she's oh, okay. Uh, okay. But I do like to cook as well, so maybe we'll be cooking in the metaverse. Who knows? <laughs> Why awesome. not? Yeah, so that that was the news segment of the Star Atlas Town Hall. It's pre-town hall news, uh, overall metaverse and crypto news. So thanks, Ash, for keeping us informed about everything that is happening around us in the metaverse ecosystem. And now we can kick off the official Star Atlas Town Hall. I have on stage a great panel. I have Steven, I have David, and I have Michael. And I think we are also waiting for Chip as well. So I have one of the biggest panel we had so far, including Ash, sorry for not mentioning you, Ash. And I'm super excited to what's going to come today in this Town Hall. Hopefully some good Alpha Leagues for everyone. So let's start with Michael. Michael, how are you today? Thank you for being here as always. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been a very exciting week. Really, uh, really pleased to be here. We do have an action-packed panel today, and uh, you know, I just want to thank the employees and team members that are joining us here. This is part of our ongoing efforts to introduce you at the community to uh, more of our internal team members. And uh, just from my perspective, from my standpoint, as we continue to grow, uh, and we are recruiting aggressively here, as we continue to grow the you know, level of detail and information that's going to be accessible and kind of channeled up um, uh, to myself is uh, more and more limited. And so uh, we want to hear direct from the people that are, you know, working um, uh, intimately with each one of these products and features that we're building for you in the community. So again, really appreciative of, of the amazing talent that we have across the team and, and uh, David and Steven and Ash, Matei and uh, Chip who will be joining us um, here shortly as well. So just want to thank you all for being here and Really excited to get into it and, and share some updates with you all. Let's go straight into business, Michael. What do you think, as, as we always do? Yeah, you know, um, as I said, we do have an action-packed schedule. So um, the general agenda for today is I just want to provide some some quick updates on uh, kind of state of affairs and projects that we're focused on across Star Atlas. And then uh, we'll make some introductions, some formal introductions to those team members that are up on stage with us. And uh, we'll, we'll get some insight direct from them. So without further ado, let me just say, you know, I, I know I alluded on the last town hall um, to the fact that we were pretty deep in uh, planning and prioritization of projects for the year. Uh, that was that was really undertaken over the first two to three weeks. And, um, and I'm quite pleased to say that this week uh, we really saw those efforts pay off and that we uh, broke down into teams, into sub squads, and uh, everybody kicked off all of their efforts. And uh, there's quite a lot that's coming up over the first six months, first half of this year that I I'll be happy to talk about um, you know those uh, those six projects that we're focused on through the engineering core. Of course, include the Star Atlas DAO. I know there's still a lot of questions out there in the community about when this is coming, and I just want to emphasize getting this DAO out, getting those governance features available to you, and things like polis staking and emissions, uh, getting that out to you is is our highest priority right now. Uh, we did discover some potential challenges in accurately measuring vote weight uh, with the implementation that we had initially designed. And some of this is through uh, third party efforts that we were 
uh, utilizing to accelerate uh, the pace of development on the on the project itself or on the feature. And um, as a result of that, you know, through our own internal analysis, we made the determination that we needed to make some modifications. Um, you know, I always uh, always reference the fact that we're not going to bring a product to market unless we feel it's safe, it's secure, and provides value to you as a user. And so it was very important for us to uh, to take a step back, delay that for a moment, ensure we were on solid footing, and build the best possible product to bring out. So uh, there is there was a, a modest delay in that, but um, being the highest priority, we still believe we can deliver this in the month of February. Um, that's the that's the objective. Could extend a little bit longer, but uh, you know, most importantly, this is this is the number one feature that we want to get out to you. So, uh, all hands on deck for that uh, for that Star Atlas DAO. We are also focused quite heavily on this concept of global polish uh, across the marketplace, which includes improvements to the user interface and the user experience. Um, this is a uh, kind of a new division within our engineering core uh, that will be perpetually ongoing from this point forward. So cleaning up uh, any level of, of tech debt that exists, as well as uh, taking in user feedback from you all out there in the community and making these improvements so it's a, a more enjoyable experience overall. Um, and then uh, I did also allude to this in the previous town hall, but we've kicked off development of our own galactic marketplace uh, program, smart contract. Uh, this will be replacing some of the implementation or integration of Serum Dex. Uh, it'll be a, a bit of a mix of both, depending on what the specific uh, requirement is, but we'll see some uh, nice features rolling out as a result of that. But most importantly, once again, referring back to things like Global Polish, uh, what we're hoping to accomplish with this is deliver a more intuitive user inter interface for you all. Um, we want to take a bit more of a gamer-centric approach to this, so you can kind of think in terms of of uh, in-game auction houses. Um, the decentralized exchange protocol is a bit confusing to non-crypto native people and people who haven't been trading across uh, crypto marketplaces for some time. And given the audience that and adoption that we're seeing, many people that are brand new to crypto, we just want to ensure that this is as intuitive and easy to use as possible. Um, and then Cream itself, you know, this is really a, a, a major, uh, project category that we've now broken down and subdivided into three separate squads. And so uh, we have teams that are focused on mining and extraction. We have teams that are focused on the crafting gameplay loop and the material requirements that go into crafting. And then uh, kind of a new development that took place over the last maybe week and a half or two weeks is the introduction of a, of a space exploration feature. So uh, that right now, but uh, I'm, we're all really excited about the potential for uh, people to utilize their ships in more capacities besides just participating in SCORE. And so all of these things, all of these major projects that we're building out, you know, we're looking to have um, rolled out over the, the next two quarters, but really all rolled out by, by mid-year mid or sometime shortly thereafter. Um, beyond that, and kind of the last point for me for right now is obviously we're putting significant effort into Unreal Engine development. Uh, we've started to reveal some of these videos that we've been um, been able to see internally for some time now, but the videos of the showroom uh, walking around with the mannequin and, and kind of viewing these various aspects of what the showroom will become. Uh, more of that's to come in the future as well. We're, we're pretty excited about a content strategy we're working on this, this year that will uh, get you a little more intimately involved about the process itself of development as we progress. Um, the only caveat that I would make there, uh, and this is very important, is that because we're sharing information with you so early in the development process, uh, a lot of this is subject to change. These feature features um, are, are very likely to be different in final version versus what you're seeing now. But we just want to get you involved. We want you to see the work that's going on, uh, and we want you to... to um, uh, feel a sense of, of empowerment and inclusion of this development process itself. So you guys are getting the complete backstage tour with us, and uh, we love that. I just want to make sure you all understand that everything is, is certainly subject to change as we progress into the future. So um, more to come a bit in the future, but uh, with that, you know, what I'd like to do is, is uh, introduce David Grimbaum. He's a uh, principal project manager with us here at Star Atlas, and uh, he's been working uh, exclusively with the with the engineering squads in ensuring that we can facilitate cross event departmental communication as well as ensure that we uh, follow 
um, yeah, deliverable timelines on the, the features that we're building. So with that, David, I uh, would love to hear from you. Maybe tell everybody a little bit about your background, when you joined us at the team, and, and what you're working on on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for having me here. I'm very excited to be able to speak to to you all. So, uh, as Michael said, my name is David. Um, I I joined Star Atlas back in September, and uh, I was part of uh, the faction selection program as well as the score program that we released last year. And uh, and and now with all the projects that Michael mentioned, I'm um, hoping to help. Uh, Everybody get aligned on how this is going to work. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm French, moved uh, to the U.S. 10 years ago to become a sound engineer. I did that, and uh, I worked on uh, podcast series, uh, movies, um, a lot of things, VR as well. And, uh, and then started getting into crypto um, back four years ago. Started exploring it, as everybody did. Um, and started having fun with Solana last year. Uh, a little fun story is that I actually edited Michael Wagner's interview uh, with Solana at some point. So sort of, sort of like a, a full loop. And then uh, back in, in September, I, I saw an opportunity to, to join the team. And I was very excited because it was mixing subjects that I was um, passionate about between crypto and video games. And uh, here I am. Awesome, man. Love that. I forgot that you were part of the team that edited that <laughs> that interview with Anatoly that that feels like a lifetime ago I think it was about a year ago uh, maybe maybe a little less yeah. um yeah you've been a fantastic addition to the team and um you know I have to say again as we continue to scale the importance of communications cross departmental is incredibly critical to our success maybe you can talk just a little bit about um again the daily interactions that you have and helping coordinate between you know leadership producers and other team members and um, you know how you think that benefits uh, our overall progress. Yeah, of course. Uh, so really, where I'd love actually to share the, this aspect because we're really exploring a new, a new process here, like to make sure that everybody gets to understand what we're working on and like also get to participate in the process of of developing the projects that we're trying to release for you guys to to have fun with our game. Uh, so really, my job comes in where. I'm listening to everybody. I I take I try to take in the information and then and see how we can you know collaborate all together. So the leadership is going to tell us, give us some some sort of direction with projects and for instance with score. And then I'll work with the team, um, designers, uh, engineers, blockchain engineers, like everyone to come up with the the product that you get to interact with. Um, so I'm, I'm part of this. Uh, I sort of wanted to introduce you to this this new process that, that we're trying to uh, to use to improve this. It is divided in in four phases. Um, and the reason I'm giving you this context is I'm hoping it's also giving you a little bit of a, an idea of how we approach all those projects that we're planning on releasing this year. There's four major phases um, that really follow the 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 product design uh, philosophy. First one being discovery, second one is exploration, third one is validation, and fourth one uh, is production. So the benefits of, and I'm gonna go into each of those phases uh, quickly. Discovery, we, are all, we all sit together, imagine that we're in a, in a room if we, uh, if we had a room. <laughs> so if we were just like a digital room and we talk about what the the project is, how what, how we understand it, what it should be doing, and really, it's a, all a brain, brainstorming session with a bunch of exercises that allow us to um, to participate and just really get into the the, the get, get deep into the concept of what a feature, the specific feature, should be. Then we get into export. Once once we do that, we we know what we want to work on, so we're going to exploration. Exploration means user flows. It means wireframes. It means prototyping, and that's that's where we want to try to take advantage of our community is that we're going to be building prototypes that will hopefully help us understand how you guys use our features. And in this way, we can address your feedback early on. As we move forward toward in, in those prototypes, that's both a mix of exploration and validation, uh, really allows us to make sure that the product that we will be releasing will be optimal. So that means also that once we get to the last phase, the production phase, we really own the the product we're working on. We know exactly how it's going to work, and that means that that last phase should hopefully, you know, work faster, and the quality should be 
absolutely stellar. So this is how we plan on working this year. Um, and, uh, and and I hope that this gives you an idea a little bit of how we uh, how we think about those those features that we're trying to release. Super helpful, David. Um, these are all very complicated and complex systems individually. And then when you think about um, you know creating integrations across the metaverse and across uh, gaming and token economy and all of the various aspects and elements of what we're doing in Star Atlas, it it's. Uh, it, it, it's it's exponentially more challenging. So you know the work that you guys do with this coordination is um, super important, and and we certainly appreciate it. Um, I would also just mention that uh, on the on the tail of this new dev process flow, uh, with respect to roadmap updates, we're going to be presenting in a slightly different format going into the future. Uh, we did pull dates off of the the public roadmap on Notion. Um, uh, at the beginning of the year and the way that we're thinking about presenting now is just to inform you based on the current status or stage or phase that each one of these projects is in. And so you'll still be informed as to where we're at um, and what the progression is looking like and you'll see development over time. But before we release any dates to you, uh, because it is it is quite difficult. Again, I you know, I've commented many times that we're working on the bleeding edge here, emerging technology. There's a lot of research um, and analysis that needs to go into this. And so predicting timelines can be quite a challenge, especially at the inception of any one of these feature or project um, um, undertakings. And so uh, before we reveal any dates to you, we're, we're going to follow the process of that dev, that new dev workflow. Uh, we'll, we'll update you on what stage it's in. And then when we feel confident that we're able to deliver a product to you at a specific time, then we'll share that confirmed date with you. So um, hopefully that's still informative. Again, David, uh, really appreciate you being up here, man. And uh, you've been a great addition to the team. So thank you so much. Thanks so much, Michael. Thanks for having me. Awesome. OK, um, moving along, we'd also like to introduce today Stephen Hadarian. Uh, Stephen is, is on our talent acquisition team and recruiting team. And uh, he's been quite busy uh, working alongside Kelsey Thompson. And um, so Stephen, welcome, man. What's up? Thanks for having me here, guys. <laughs> Yeah, man. What's up? Uh, so, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about when when you joined the team, and uh, maybe a, a little bit about uh, company culture as you guys have been involved in that, and and just the day in the life of Steven. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. So, uh, I'm approaching my six month. Actually, uh, it feels like it's been um, it's been years, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a, a a rocket ship of a six months, and Wow, since since last quarter of 2021, we doubled our workforce, you know, in those in those last 3 months of 2021. Right now, we just sped past 150 um uh people workforce all over the world, Michael. It's it's wild. So, the day in the life of Steven, man, it's I love it. Honestly, I honestly think I have one of the best jobs at Star Atlas. <laughs> I'm not going to lie because I get to talk to the most creative and intellectual and interesting people in the world. And um it it's been a it's been a blast. I'm I'm really enjoying it. We're we're building a team that you know, Michael like I, I receive a ton of resumes. In fact, um the amount of resumes we got in Q4 of last year literally quadrupled. And so um I'm, ton, I'm receiving a ton of resumes, and they're all great. Most of them are amazing, actually. But what we're really trying to create of the culture of Starless is it just so happens that the most important things and aspects of, of people that we're bringing onto the team and that we value, you can't put these things on a resume. You know, these are things like passion and, and work ethic. And, and egoless servant leadership and, and, and commitment to a mission, right? And these are things that even during our recruitment and our, our talent acquisition strategies and our, and our culture creation as a remote first company, you know, it's not easy to create a, a fully remote global company that has great culture, that feels like a family. But we're creating this foundation that, um, that the talent that we bring on, we see eye to eye. We're on that common flow. We're on that common wavelength of a constant mission um, that we all believe in and they're all committed to. So it's been fantastic. I'm really excited. Well said, man. Thank you. And you, you've 
been doing a fantastic job in fielding all of those inquiries. <clears throat> I wouldn't imply that your job is any easier because of the amount of interest, but um, I, I have to say how inspiring it is for us in that um, you know our energy doesn't have to have to be dedicated to convincing people to work for us, right? I mean, it's a lot of people yeah. that are incredibly intelligent, to your point, and passionate and very enthusiastic about the potential of what we're building coming to us. And then it's identifying the best people uh, that can fit within our team and within our culture and fill those gaps that we presently have. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, as I said, your job's not any easier, but but man, how cool that so many people are applying with us every day. Well, you know, it comes back to the community, Michael, because, and even recently, we're bringing on and, and onboarding more people from our community. It's it's truly, you know, even in my past experiences and working with multiple different types of companies and different verticals, one constant for me in my personal life has been community. It's been relationships. And, and what I've seen in the Star Atlas community is this constant passion for what we're building, this constant mission. And that we see that in the team. You know, I literally look around remotely <laughs> in the company. And you know what I see? I see e literally every single person wakes up in the morning, they open up their computer, and there's this big goofy smile on their face <laughs> because they're truly doing what they love. They've combined their passions with their skills and 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 who they are as people. And that's that's truly what we're building as startups ground up, right? In every department. Yeah, man. Um I I love that point on community. And as I survey the even the stage here, um, every single one of you was a member of the community before joining us on the team. Yep. So uh really incredible and and for anyone out there in the audience that's listening in that is you know interested in finding a place for yourself at star atlas steven maybe you can uh talk them talk them through what you know what a, what a workflow would look like or how to apply or how to reach out to us and um uh you know as a as a preface i'll say that we are working on improving some of the uh workflows on in terms of what we're seeking right now and making sure that that information is immediately available to you. But um, yeah, what's the, what's the best way to reach out to us and let, let us know uh, about their interest? Yeah. I mean, you can send me an email jobs at staratlas.com, or you can shoot it to me personally at Steven at staratlas.com. And you send that over to us and um, you know, send over your resume or just send over a brief summary of who you are. Some people don't have resumes. Right, and some people have amazing skill sets, um, and and we still want to meet with our community members. We still want to figure out how we can utilize the best talent in the world. Um, and again, a lot of things are are you're able to be taught, right? But there's other things that you can't be, you can't necessarily learn over time. And um, those are some of the most important things that we look at here um, in, in building out this team. So yeah, send me uh, a an email jobs at staratlas.com and we're literally hiring across all the departments in our engineering in our design in our game product design in our rev ops marketing you name it um you, you think you can do it send us a resume send us who you are we want to talk to you um i'll drop a little note here that anyone that has experience in uh, economics, uh, that's one of the categories that we're quite aggressively hiring for. Obviously, we have a, uh, a complex economy across Star Atlas, again, consisting of not only the internal metaverse economy, the token economy, monetization across uh, the company, but um, even things like treating the metaverse itself as an independent nation state that must manage fiscal policy and monetary policy and, and um, things like foreign exchange and foreign policy. So uh, anyone out there with uh, a background in economics, please do reach out to us because we are looking to, to fill those roles as well. Stephen, I, I don't know if you have um, the information immediately in front of you. Uh, you, you know, we've hired 20 full-time employees just since the beginning of the year. Um, yep. You know, puts us on pace for just about one new hire per day. Um, yeah. Did you want to share any information on that? Yeah, 100%. I can go through um, some of those uh, full-time hires that we just brought on since the beginning of the year. Uh, we brought on two Unreal game devs. We brought on an HR specialist, a senior concept artist, a game systems designer, a growth engineer, a character art director, technology director. We hired three web devs, a head of a game economy, 
a technical project manager, technical art director, environment art director, and of course, um, our Metaverse media host, Ash, which is here on stage with us as well. It's been incredible to see it grow. It's, uh, it's difficult to keep up with you guys. Um, well, again, man, you, you've been doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, it's obvious with the, the growth of employees uh, throughout the company. Any closing thoughts uh, for us right now? No, that's it. Thank you all. And uh, it's been a, a great time. Appreciate it. Awesome. Stephen, thanks so much. Um, yeah, Stephen, <laughs> hey. Michael, you, you did this job easier for me today. Nice, nice job hosting the town hall, man. I think that's uh, you know, that's our goal as a company is to make everybody's lives a little yeah. easier. We have to say everyone being up here on stage has made my job easier as well. So it's uh, something. I'm yeah, sure man. Yeah. So thank you for that. I think that uh, maybe we have something from product to cover before we move on, right? Yeah, I think uh, you know, yeah. Chip has endeared himself to the community <laughs> since his debut last week. And, and uh, so I'm sure everybody would love to hear a little bit from you, Chip, and what's what's going on on, uh, on Cream and, and product development. Yeah, sure. Um, I know I had mic issues last time. Is my volume good? I can hear you well. I can hear you as well, yeah. Great. So, yeah, there's been a lot going on uh, this past week, specifically I, I know uh, Michael alluded towards the ship exploration um, direction we're going, and I've been talking with Danny, the uh, the chief product officer, um, about this direction, and we are extremely excited about the, these new this new potential, this new gameplay, that uh, this new yeah this new direction, new gameplay. It's closer to what we envisioned this game was going to be, and we're we're. We've been discussing with the tech team on what's possible on the blockchain, and um, and we didn't think that this would be something near term we could do, but now we're, we're it's looking like it's a more feasible option. So, really, this past week's been exploring the feasibility of that, what what the implications for the gameplay loops are going to look like, um, just kind of really leaning hard into it. And uh, I wish I could go into details, but you know I, I don't want to give away too much right now. But I I, I just want to overview that there's a lot going on behind the scenes and um we're even like i was super excited about the things we were doing last town hall and now i'm like twice as excited and i got that goofy grin on my face right now that steven was talking about so so yeah that, that that's all i'm i'm probably going to say at this point we do have some extra updates as well i think michael you you have them uh if you can go through them and share them, what the yeah yeah absolutely. So this, I mean this is um this yeah this is on the uh, on the product side here. Um, you know one of the I guess big announcements is uh, related to people's request for additional ship assets. You know we we uh, were quite successful towards the end of the year following the close uh, or the launch rather of Score um, in selling out all of the remaining inventory that we had available over the course of 2021. So <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> excuse me, really think I need one of those sips of water that you always refer to, Santi, one second. Sure, man. Yeah, you need it. You need it. I know. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, uh, yeah, you know, really exceeded all expectations internally. Um, but uh, again, indicative of the interest here and everything that we're doing at Star Atlas. So we have uh, formalized now the release schedule for this year. Uh, you will see the initial release of ships starting next week, I believe. Uh, uh, the uh, the the reveal is going to take place on Tuesday of next week, and then that ship will actually go on sale on February 3rd. So um, I, I am also happy to announce that we do have uh, quite an extensive list of ships going uh, into this year that includes 51 different models, three of those being Titans. Uh, so there should be plenty of variety of models and classifications and sizes and assets for anyone out there in the community to be able to participate and get involved in all of these new features that are coming out, whether it be score or uh, uh, space exploration, and also you know looking towards the future with the release of land assets and, and the ability to mine and craft and create your own ships. Um, so uh, yeah, and. Uh, Otherwise, on product, uh, I've also alluded to the fact in the past that we are
working on an, an internal SDK that will ultimately be open sourced. Uh, this SDK is the probably the first blockchain integration into Unreal Engine, and we call we call that the foundation SDK. Uh, this will enable other game developers out there who are building on Unreal Engine to be able to integrate Web3 assets like Atlas or Polis or uh, NFTs into their games into the future. And uh, I think part of the inspiration there and the hope there and what we want to encourage and inspire in the community is the ability to build on top of uh, Star Atlas as well. Uh, while we're not focused on that, uh, enabling that type of content creation directly inside the universe that is Star Atlas in the near term, uh, we certainly see the potential and value of uh, external content creation um, and, and building that into the world that we're creating uh, in the foundation that we're creating today. Um, so the first phase of the Solana wallet integration into Unreal Engine is uh, now operational, and we're currently stylizing and de defining and uh, designing the UI behind that. So your wallet will um, interact seamlessly with the showroom. Uh, the ship summoning process is now functional on all of the landing pads in the showroom. So when you use a terminal, you call your ship, you bring that NFT into the showroom. It's uh, now capable of landing uh, uh, within the environment. Uh, we do have a new production director position um, integrating well with Spearsoft and the uh, our team at Automata, that's the studio behind Star Atlas. Uh, Galaxy and solar system configurable land parceling is also functional in Unreal Galaxy Generator. This goes into, you know, what does the universe of Star Atlas look like? How are you going to navigate the stars? Where do things exist and what are the coordinates behind that? Uh, this is a, a solar system uh, module that we're developing out presently um, and focused on building that world for you. Uh, character debug system is functional in Unreal. Uh, we're utilizing the advanced locomotion and changing species to test uh, differing heights in the environment. That's part of the, the reveal uh, that came out this week when you saw the character, that, uh, that mannequin model. That's just a, you know, a template model that we integrated in while we focus on uh, building out animation of all of our own characters. Uh, but using that model allows us uh, to do testing across the environment so that we can identify any areas that might be problematic for the player. We don't want you to get stuck somewhere. We don't want you to fall off a cliff and not be able to get back. So, um, uh, but I think it's really cool looking at everything from the, you know, the smallest character, Punab, all the way up to, you know, the largest characters throughout the game and, and being able to model that today using that, that mannequin model. Uh, we're focused on a uh, writer's room being built with potential for four prominent and enthusiastic writers in the industry to join the team. This is going to go into our multimedia campaign. Um, I don't think Danny wants us to share anything uh, too extensively about this right at the moment, but uh, content from Star Atlas is not going to exist exclusively in the game industry, um, and it's not going to exist exclusively in Unreal Engine. We're already exploring opportunities across audio, visual, um, uh, and written content that will be coming out to the community, some of which will be delivered this year. Uh, there is an unannounced lore project that's underway. Uh, deliverables have been submitted this week, um, and we will begin guiding production and prepare players for the launch of the full game through this. Uh, you know, I've discussed these a little bit, but enhancements to cream and score, uh, those are being discussed, focus on that ship exploration module. And again, uh, when available, we'll release more news to you all on that. Um, and then uh, next week, as I mentioned, the, the, the first ship is coming out. Uh, I, I would note here that this is going to be an entry level ship. It's incredibly important to us that we ensure that Star Atlas from an economic standpoint is always accessible and it's inclusive to people all over the world. So you'll actually see the, uh, the first ship come out, which is an extra, extra small model uh, starting at $15. So uh, and then more to come on that. The release schedule this year is actually going to be uh, a bit more consistent, uh, whereas they were uh, semi-sporadic, um, kind of based on demand last year. This year, we've got it all scheduled out. Uh, those 51 ships are going to be coming out and rolling out pretty consistently through the course of the year. Every week or two weeks, you'll see some new ships come online. So that's uh, quite a bit from the product team, Santi. Yeah, thank you for all the updates, Michael. Thank you very much. People are saying that I'm trying to kill you with water. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I, I will let you rest again, man. Uh, just taking some time here before we move on to the next segment to tell people that we are going to have the after town hall party hosted by Ash 
on Twitter after uh, right after the town hall. We will go to Twitter and, and just hang out with the community. Sometimes Michael, sometimes Chip join. So if you want to go, just go to Twitter and you will find us. Also, I want to point out and something that <clears throat> I think that we should always mention is the security, the security tips that we can give to the community. Uh, always remember to triple check the links you click. Always, we always recommend to have a hardware wallet for you to have your your key safe stored. And also, just uh, don't trust any any DMs that you may receive here in Discord or anywhere. Nobody from our team will ever message you first or will ever ask you for funds or anything. And never connect your wallet to any link that you don't triple check. That's something that I will cover every single town hall because I feel like it's important. Uh, we see some people losing their funds uh, for not knowing these sec little security tips that you need to, to have here in the crypto space. So that's all from my side. I think, not sure, uh, Michael, if you have any extra comments. No, I, I, I love that you're sharing that. I would just give a little uh, mention here to Dan Park, who joined us uh, last year as well, I believe October of last year. Uh, he's he's leading our in-house corporate council, but we are quite aggressively going after any of these scam sites that exist that are looking to sweep uh, seed phrases and and you know subsequently steal funds and assets from people from people and players and making sure that we take these scam sites down as quickly as possible. So um, I know we have various channels uh, where you can communicate with us and report scams. We appreciate when you do. Um, it enables us to go after them quicker and and try to save uh, as many people as possible. So it is a uh, super important for us to protect people, especially given um, uh, many people are very new to crypto that are joining us now. So thanks for sharing that, Santi. You know, you. Uh, just speaking of Dan, by the way, uh, there are questions about their, out there uh, regarding regulatory environment. I'll just say that we are working with the Blockchain Association, which is the largest trade group in the United States. Uh, they interface with policymakers in Washington, um, and our ambition is to ensure that we stay ahead of the curve. Um, on any regulatory changes and he's he's monitoring that closely providing feedback to us and we'll be interacting with legislators and policymakers in the future educating them on all of the potential benefits that the metaverse brings to the world um, employment opportunities and you know something that's important to, to government is taxation and um, uh, you know ensuring that we have compliant fair uh, systems uh, across star atlas so um, you know dan if you're out there appreciate all your work on that and then uh, just last thing for me, just some, uh, I, I know we want to get into questions. It's just a few really quick updates on the marketing side uh, or community side. Um, you know, we did see our Twitter grow now to over 300,000 followers. Um, wow. You know, that's, it's huge. It's a lot. That's huge. Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's a ton. Yeah, and I, you know, I think this year, uh, sharing one of our internal metrics for success, we're looking at growing our uh, user base, the number of players in Star Atlas by a million people this year, and we think we'll be able to accomplish that with all of these new features that are coming out across the web-based mini game, and then also the release of the first Unreal Engine content. So. 300,000 is big, but I think by the end of this year, we're going to be absolutely blown away. Um, and then, you know, we're quite active out there. I know Pablo was on a live stream earlier today on Twitch. Um, uh, one of the big events that took place this week was the GameSpeak conference. Uh, this was actually led by a sponsorship by Facebook. I was kind of surprised they didn't... Um, they didn't sponsor directly through Meta, their their new parent company. But uh, this Game Beat conference is the was the second year running, and it was entirely dedicated to Metaverse. And we had a significant opportunity to discuss the concepts of you know we consider to be the open, distributed, decentralized, and permissionless uh, Metaverse that we're building versus uh, kind of legacy systems where uh, they're, they're very much walled garden approaches and uh, more permission-based systems and being able to build upon. And so um, that was a great event, over 5,800 attendees and um, you know many thousands or millions of impressions uh, resulting from that. I, I believe we re released some details on, um, uh, on the panels. So uh, welcome you all to uh, give that a watch or give that a listen to. So, yeah, uh, super busy week, Santi. Uh, a couple of weeks, but yeah, uh, a busy. lot of exciting things going on, and you can just hear the enthusiasm uh, across the team.
Yeah, on that note, on the live streams, we have a Spanish-speaking community live stream tomorrow. We are going to be live streaming from Carl's uh, YouTube channel on on YouTube, of course, and just inviting everyone from the Spanish-speaking community to join. I'm going to be joining with Pablo, so just inviting everyone. And so if there's nothing else to share, Michael, from, from your side, or Steven, or Chip, or David, we can move to questions. Actually, just on the topic of uh, of Spanish speaking community, and uh, you know, I guess in this particular case, the the Portuguese speaking speaking community, uh, we had a uh, I don't I don't know what to call it a, a wild appearance of one of the characters. Uh, the artist's name is Zhao, uh, down in Brazil. I, I I don't know if that was an airport, but I have to say the exchange that had put that poster together, we've never spoken to. Um, we're, we're pleased with the fact that they pulled some of that content, but it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just out there in the open. So, uh, I, again, I think people are really appreciating the caliber, uh, of the creativity and design that's going into everything that we're doing at Star Atlas. And it was really cool just to see that organic growth, uh, of, yeah. of our assets out there. I shared the picture in the town hall chat. If you want to see it, it's yeah, super, the cool. Chat. super cool. Yeah. So, cool. okay. Yeah, with that, um, yeah, we'd love to welcome uh, people up to to the stage to ask questions. Feel free to ask Ash, Stephen, David, Chip, Santi, or myself. Any anything um, anything that you'd like to understand better? Yeah, we have an old friend here from Cracker. Hey, How are you from Cracker? hello, guys and girl. <laughs> How are you doing? Welcome, man. Good welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, good to be here again. Thank you very much for inviting me back on stage. So I have uh, one, well, let's see, perhaps two questions if I can. First is about uh, the DAC, the DAC registration. Uh, is it possible perhaps to get that on the roadmap? And uh, what are the odds of getting that registration uh, coming online this year? Michael. Yeah, it's a great question. And it is uh, definitely a priority, priority for us. Um, uh, we're still doing some exploration again on the specific framework that we want to use for that. So um, I, I would say it's quite feasible for us to release the DAC registration process this year. What we do want to facilitate, though, is a deeper tool set that enables guilds to do things like treasury management, um, of course, their own internal governance, uh, possibly the ability to mint their own internal governance token that would be, you know, uh, replacing the necessity to utilize something like Polis for your own um, guild governance. And um, who knows, maybe even the ability for you guys to mint your own NFTs and, and find a marketplace to sell those. So we, we are looking at um, quite an extensive DAC platform that's in development. And uh, I'm actually just waiting on some updates on that myself. But I, it, it's important to us. Um, it's going to become more important as we release these enhanced game features. And so uh, I do think we'll have something out this year and we'll provide some more updates on that in the town halls to follow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that, <clears throat> that sounds really good. So I, I have just a suggestion to make because um, I was wondering if it perhaps it's possible for you guys to contemplate to perhaps split it in like a tier zero and tier one, where tier zero just allows uh, the ducks to register their name and their faction and allows uh, their member base to sign up. So we at least start to have an idea uh, on the blockchain who is with us um, and also the fleet, comp fleet, uh, so fleet composition, uh, faction selection and that kind of stuff. And then perhaps bring the raft online with a tier zero just as we can get the ball rolling because as you know, some guilds are getting quite big. Um, people like to know who, who has what and uh, that would be just pretty cool. So if, 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 if you see an opportunity to perhaps split it that way, I think a bunch of people will be very happy with that uh, setup. Just a suggestion from my side. No, I love the suggestion. It, that might very well be the approach that we have taken. Yeah, you know, our general process is to roll out iteratively on on everything, right? Whether that's yeah, feature exactly, yeah. or so, um, just conducting a little more uh, due diligence on our side in terms of what the best approach is. But um, there is a possibility that we get that out. DAC registration, um, we understand how important that is to you all. And what we don't want to have to do is drive you to utilize external to uh, uh, tools in the short term. Um, and then have yeah, to agree. undertake some conversion process in the future. So uh, I hear you loud and clear. It's a priority for us. We understand it's a priority for you. So we will uh, we'll certainly put some additional thought into that. Super. Thank you very much. I'll leave uh, the podium to the stage to rest. Thank you. Thanks, Funcracker.
we also have Duncan here. Welcome, Duncan, to the stage. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Great, doing great, man. Thanks great for asking. Time. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, <clears throat> I had a question about, I guess, I think IP lore or IP, like the use of Star Atlas IP, uh, in in particular guilds uh, lore. So. <clears throat> You know, everyone knows we we're we're the mafia themed guild, and and we're putting a lot of uh, you know emphasis on on creating our lore, and we we also have a team of uh, like a writers' room of content creators, and uh, you know we're 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 staying away from using things like Ooster and particular ship names and all you know all these different things, um, and, and we're kind of staying really vague with it, and so I just wanted to see if if you guys could provide some guidance on maybe how we um you know what like like what what we can do as far as our as far as our lord sh should we uh, you know keep it um excuse me completely you know completely separate or or w w what are your thoughts on that it's it's a great question and you know what i might recommend is uh would be happy to put you in touch with dan um whom i referred to earlier uh, you know our in-house legal counsel our general positioning right now is um you know we we don't want people to be leveraging star atlas intellectual property for any commercial purposes so if you're looking to monetize it say sell assets or sell out nfts that have uh, the likeness of star atlas um we are we are preventing that um, it's a good question on lore and how that integrates into uh, your guild specifically. We do want to enable these things and facilitate these things, but um, I, I can't give you a clear and definitive answer right now, but again, would be happy to put you in touch with our in-house counsel uh, so we can give you a, a clear direction moving forward. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can coordinate that through myself or uh, possibly with Santi as well. Yeah, happy to help. So Thanks, thank you, Duncan. Duncan. Appreciate it. Thank you for the questions. We also have Rat O Doom here on stage. Welcome. How are hey you? Guys. Hey, uh, welcome. Pleasure to meet all you guys. I was actually surprised I was called on, but thank you so much. Uh just a couple quick things. Um, first of all, I want to thank you guys for this opportunity. This is super cool. I'm super happy to be on the ground floor of this. And secondly, um, Big fan of you guys. Really, really uh, happy with what you guys are doing so far and everything. A uh, couple quick questions. Uh, first one being uh, with uh, ship releases and whatnot. Um, have we seen any changes to the timeline on Cream and Score One? Uh, a lot of people know that I am uh, very excited for Score One, so I'm very curious about that. Um, uh, you know, please, please to announce that uh, the. Um, uh, the ship release schedule has not negatively impacted any of the rest of our development uh, and, and roadmap timelines. So uh, we're we're still targeting mid year for the release of Cream, which should be which would consist of really those three uh, sub projects that I described earlier on in the call. Uh, score V one is um, uh, so we ha have a um, a project definition for what we envision as score V one, which includes. Um, more interactive uh, ship missions that players can undertake. Uh, if anything, what I would uh, um, uh, kind of state here is that the <laughs> that sub project of space exploration that might complement uh, or will very likely complement activities in crafting and mining um, might actually replace score V1. And so instead of seeing that towards the end of the year, you see a score V1 that is uh, complementary to, to the release of cream and then maybe even uh, some possibility of a score V2 of some sort coming out by the end of the year. Oh man, that sounds amazing. Super excited. Cool. Um... Another quick question. Um, I know that people really want to know about Polis and things like that. Uh, just wanted to know, like, um, because you guys said that we need to pivot to another solution due to security issues. I was wondering if we could get any further clarification on that, as well as um, if you guys have, like, an idea of how things are going to go down with that and whatnot. Yeah, I think, um, and, and just to clarify, I, that might have been a little um, miscommunication. It, it wasn't necessarily security issues. What we're looking at is, uh, the method that we were looking to implement on the Star Atlas DAO enabled users to stake multiple times, um, so multiple accounts to um, to the staking contract. And you know where you would see this taking place is 
when you were able to claim your emissions, you would naturally want to restake those, or many people we would um, imagine would want to restake those. Uh, what that uh, leads to is this creation of multiple user accounts that we then need to track. And because this is, these are all you know, blockchain integrations, um, we foresaw the potential for difficulty in accurately measuring voting weight um, within that program. And so it wasn't so much of a security concern as much as it was a, a technical impl implementation concern. Um, with that said, uh, as I noted at the beginning of the call, uh, we understand how important the DAO is to all of you. It is to us as well. We want to get these governance features out and it's, it's our number one priority right now. So um, I, I don't see the timeline extending uh, too much longer than our initial anticipated release date of February 3rd. Um, still hopeful that we see that by the end of February and it should be the first major feature release that you see from us this year. Awesome, awesome. Um, I know I had one other question, but I may yeah. just, uh, approach it to Santi later because I don't really, I don't have that one ready specifically, but, um, yeah, sure. it's okay. It's okay. You can ask me later. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, but beyond that, I just wanted to say thanks to you guys. Uh, really appreciate you letting me come up here and ask a couple questions and, uh, hello to everyone that knows me out there. Uh, <laughs> much love for you all. Have a great day. Awesome. Thank man. Thanks for Thank you so much. So I invited Dune from Final Frontier on stage. Let's see if he joins. If not, we'll let someone else into the stage. Okay, inviting someone else so we don't lose time here. Oh, to both at the same time. So let's start with Dune. Dune, how are you, friend? Yeah, hi, hey everyone. Hey, Santi, Michael, and uh, everyone else thank you so much for the opportunity especially the community gathered around the start let's i believe that's the most valuable thing that we have right now uh, so just a quick question right now uh we are if, if we want to buy like uh, ammo and stuff we have to approve within the phantom world uh and also the atlas and everything we earn so for example in the future uh if I'm in a fight and my ship gets destroyed, actually I have to burn my NFT. That's I believe that's the thing that happens. And also, if I, for example, kill a boss and I loot it, I need to approve within the game. Uh, I want to know what's the mechanics of this. Like every time during a fight, I have to approve within the Phantom Wallet to like get the items or like to lose items how how's that going to go down or it's too early to like have that in the team uh, val valid concern um and definitely something that we're approaching at uh, resolving before we get into you know full release of the game part of this foundation sdk which is the blockchain or web3 integration into unreal engine would create a more seamless experience for the users um i have to be honest with you this is all still very early conceptualization and how we resolve that um but you know, naturally, we don't want you to have to approve every single transaction uh, with any interaction that you're undertaking uh, as you're playing the game. So uh, the trade-off that we that we have to um, analyze is ensuring that users have security over their assets versus convenience and being able to play. So um, I can't say that we're going to have uh, any immediate solution for that, but it's definitely an area that we're uh, researching closely and, and figuring out how to optimize the user experience. This also includes things like, um, you know, we don't we don't necessarily want every single user action to result in a state change on the blockchain. Um, not every action needs to be confirmed, and so trying to determine or structure uh, kind of time periods of activity that then ultimately get recorded. So, um, yeah, again, still very early uh, to 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 have any definitive response for you, but we understand we're gamers. Uh, we we want to just have fun, be able to play, and. Uh, not have to be constantly clicking your ledger or or approving in Phantom. So we're right there with you. You you still here, friend? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. That, that was the question, and thanks for the opportunity again. Thank you for asking the question, my friend. You bet, uh, Santi. Let me add just one additional point there, and I I don't I a little bit indecisive. At the uh, uh, best approach, we as an entity do not want to become custodians of assets. 
Um, with that said, you know, we, we were working with uh, the team at Stardust very early on. Uh, now, their product was still very early in development, and as such, we ended up undertaking our own development efforts to satisfy certain features that they would be capable of delivering. Um, now, whether we uh, directly integrate this into our product or it ends up becoming a third-party vendor that's accessible to users, this idea of having your assets custodied with some uh, third party uh, that creates a more seamless process for the user is a uh, very real potentiality. So it would be possible, again, you essentially, while you're playing, your assets move into this wallet. Um, it is uh, a, a auto confirmation while it's in that wallet. Your assets are still secure and protected from you know, malicious bad actors. Um, and then when you're done playing, they move back into your wallet. Now, we're very supportive of the concept of this, this whole ideology of decentralization and self-sovereign ownership of your assets. Uh, which is why I'm implying that we don't necessarily want to be custodians ourselves, but um, if there's a platform out there that's reliable and trustworthy and we feel it'd be beneficial to the users, we'll certainly look at bringing that integration in so that, um, so that it's a, a more convenient and better user experience for you overall. Thanks, Michael, for, for the extra comments. And thanks to- Yeah, you. thank you, that was- Sure, sure, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for the question again. And we have also Christian here on stage. Welcome Christian to the stage. How are you, my friend? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for uh, putting me on stage on such a short notice. Uh, I would like to thank everybody who is uh, gathering here today and listening to this amazing town hall. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I just want to uh, ask some uh, very serious question. Uh, as everybody knows, I'm the founder of the Interstellar Alliance and I'm hosting the uh, Met Metaverse Council meetings uh, from the United Metaverse Organizations. Anybody familiar with uh, what we are doing is uh, that we are uh, heavily invested in uh, building this alternative society around the Staratus Metaverse. and. Uh, we are mostly f also focusing on building those specific communities that are uh, focusing on around specific nations around the world, but uh, also different organizations who are not part of any nation specific. Uh, we have some ideas and we are working already on uh, several projects, but one of the most interesting ones is the chance that we can have uh, uh, government communications uh, with different governments, which can support uh, our initiatives to create something like a, a metaverse university or even a, uh, a separated um, part of a, like a government initiative for uh, education and work, like employment, uh, unemployment programs, and uh, all kinds of different. Uh, uh, services that uh, we can build together. And uh, my question is, uh, if we are able in the future to create some kind of uh, employment programs with the help of different governments or even um, just personal companies to be who want to invest and just employ people in the metaverse and just create this alternative way to create value for themselves, uh, will the Staratos uh, developers and just the community overall support such ideas? I want to make it like a, you know, just a broader question because I think it's very important for the education of the future generation uh, to just understand how of those blockchain technologies and, uh, you know, overall the blockchain space and how we can create this alternative uh, employment methods. Well, uh, you know, first of all, I, I applaud you for your initiatives there, and it's um, certainly an endeavor that we'd like to support uh, with full force from the team at Star Atlas. I'm very, very much interested in thinking about the metaverse as uh, kind of an alternative society with new social constructs in which, you know, we're completely borderless. We have a global community, and, um, uh, you know, that means understanding people and culture from all over the world and being able to help people all over the world. And we understand the potential of the metaverse to provide 
employment and compensation and income and opportunities that don't exist uh, when you're confined by a geographic border. So uh, fully support you in that. I was just on a call earlier this week with another team um, uh, that is focused on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics and uh, developing out an engineering platform. And they'd like to leverage our platform and our environments to be able to bring their product to the world as well. So um, certainly something we're looking into, uh, looking to resource that more over the course of the year and build up teams that will further facilitate that type of activity. Um, I've also made the you know rather bold comments in the past that I do believe the metaverse has the potential to create the largest efficient um, and fair labor markets the world has ever seen. So I'm, uh, again, fully supportive of your initiative and would be happy to do whatever we can do to, to help bring that to life. Thank you very much, Michael. I also, I completely agree with you. Uh, we are all seeing the metaverse as a extension of our world and uh, one of the best ways to tackle the uh, the um, just evolution of technologies that are just uh, removing the need of certain jobs around the world. So we all understand the importance of just creating those alternative jobs slowly but steadily in order to transition the uh, people who pretty much cannot find jobs for various of reasons. So thank you very much for everything everybody is doing. Yeah, thank you, Christian. And thanks for being with us for so long, by the way. For anyone out there in the community that uh, doesn't know Christian, I, I he was one of the earliest members in our Discord, um, I want to say back in February of last year, and uh, responsible for forming the, the Guild Recruiting Channel in our Discord. So thanks for being around with us for so long and uh, for all that you're doing for Star Atlas and for, uh, for the world. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, right. Christian. So I think we don't have more time for one question, right, Michael? We are still an hour in. We are already an hour in. So should, should, I don't, we, take it, sure. should we take it to, to a, a polis vote, you know? <laughs> could be, could be, yeah. So I not mean, sure, Michael, if you have any closing thoughts or anyone here on stage has any closing thoughts. I yeah, I would love to hear if if anyone else has any final Ash doing a, a post town hall uh Twitter uh, spaces. I'm sorry, you were cutting out. I, I believe our yeah, are you guys doing another uh, post town hall Twitter spaces today? We are. So at 1.20 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are having an after party to recap and just chat with the community about all things Star Atlas related. So we would love for all of you to hop on Twitter and join us in the conversation. It's always a great time. Thank you, Ash. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's on... 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So see you everyone on, on Twitter. Yeah, so I mean, just just closing thoughts. I, I can't tell you how excited we are as a team to be um, <laughs> to uh, start undertaking all of those major projects that we've got coming out this year. It's very exciting times. The metaverse is here again. Crypto is here to stay. Uh, we've made it, everyone. So this is um, super exciting times. We're uh, on the precipice of exponential innovation around the world, and uh, we're we're super pleased to be leading that charge, at least in the in the crypto space and uh, everything that we're doing at at Star Atlas. Um, as always, extremely grateful to the amazing team that we have. Um, I, I can tell all you people out there in the community these are these people are putting so much energy into everything that we're doing and time and passion and uh their heads and their hearts and so very appreciative of the team and of course you out there in the community we couldn't be doing this without all of you so thank you all for being here um look forward to you know keeping you uh, up to date on all the latest progress that we're making at star atlas and and uh looking forward to a really fantastic year great nothing to add there thank you michael for your for your words and thanks steven chip mate David and Ash for joining us today. Uh, it, it has been great and nothing else. So this was the this is the end of the Star Atlas Town Hall and power to the people. And stick it to the man. Are you ready for the next evolution in gaming? Blockchain games are here. Why just play when you can play to earn? Enter the Star Atlas Metaverse with Rome. 
Star Atlas is a grand strategy game of space exploration, territorial conquest, political domination, and so much more. Rome is a premier guild of the only faction within Star Atlas. Rome is here to play and to earn. Want to take part in the action? Rome is accepting new citizens. Join the Rome Guild on Discord to learn more at GoRome.io.